Hello everyone, my name is Riley Wildman and in today's presentation we'll be talking about the Australian archaeologist Josephine Flood. Josephine Flood was originally born Josephine Scar in Yorkshire, England on the 25th of July 1936. She went on to complete a Bachelor in Classics at Cambridge, Girton College in 1959. Then Flood moved to Australia in 1963, when a year later she married an Australian diplomat named Philip Flood. So Josephine Flood completed her Masters in 1968, and her PhD was completed in 1973 at the Australian National University, ANU, where the thesis she completed was titled The Moth Hunters, Aboriginal Prehistory of the Australian Alps in 1980. An interesting fact about Flood's other interests is that she was potentially the only roof climbing group member at Cambridge that was a woman. So this group honed their mountaineering skills by scaling many of the university's stone buildings, and Flood even led a famous expedition or the Women's Kulu Expedition in 1961, and acted as a vital part of the La Chama Expedition, which is all mountaineering, the following year, and they were both in Nepal. The expeditions, during their attempts, were able to conquer six peaks, which were all over 20,000 feet, of which these peaks were all previously unclimbed. Flood also wrote a book of these talented women's exploits titled Four Miles High. Now, on to Flood's training and her illustrious career. Flood's professional theoretical approach to archaeology involved the interpretation of prehistoric artefacts and material through using contemporary collated ethnographic data and records. She tried to use her methods in order to reinterpret and reject preconceived colonialist notions of hunter-gatherer or indigenous primitiveness. In Flood's own words, there have only been minor changes in the Stone Age foraging, semi-nomadic way of life of Aboriginal people throughout history. Her methods look to change the status quo of the time in order to create more Indigenous representation and positive reception or uptake of their culture in normal public or educational life. And it was in 1989 at Lake Mungo where Flood attempted to pinpoint women's roles in Indigenous societies and their social impacts through the analysis of a cremated female skeleton, in which she would later expand upon in one of her archaeological books years later. She was also awarded the position of Senior Conservation Officer within the Australian Heritage Commission, the AHC, in Canberra, 1978. During the following year, she was anointed the Assistant Director, a position of which she held until 1991. Under her part directorship in 1984, she also led the Aboriginal Environment Section of the AHC. Within her seven-year tenure as lead, over 2,000 Indigenous archaeological sites were inducted into the register of the National Estate, and it was Flood that saw the Tasmanian Southwest Wilderness Area, Kakadu National Park, and New South Wales Willandra Lakes region to the World Heritage List. Flood led seven major expeditions that were funded by Earthwatch in her early retirement, as she had designed her retirement to be dedicated to research, her travels and writing. These expeditions were held within the Northern Territory, Victoria River region and Cape York, with an aim to excavate sites and record the rock arts held therein. Her retirement is a productive time for archaeology, as she has provided potent support for projects in the Northern Territory rock art sites, such as the Land of the Lightning Brothers, the Australian Alps, and the dating of Australian megafauna, and their approximate extinction date. It was Flood's dedication to her field and her consummately procured works and books that proved her worthy for election as a member of the Emeritus Faculty of ANU in 2015. And in some of her most recent exploits, Flood in the 2019 Queen's Birthday Honours was accepted as a member of the Order of Australia, the AM, due to her incredible work as an archaeologist. Her exact merit thanks her for significant service to archaeology and to the study of Indigenous culture. I will now talk about Flood's most important or influential written works. These include The Original Australians, Story of the Aboriginal People, which was originally penned in 2006, but received multiple updates throughout the years, with the most recent update being in 2019, and it was filled with recent archaeological discoveries and then republished. This book provides the reader with knowledge of Indigenous pasts and stories from distant prehistory to their communities in the present day. 
The second book would be Archaeology of the Dreamtime, the story of prehistoric Australia and its people, written in 1983, later republished in 1990. Then The Riches of Ancient Australia, which was done in 1990. And finally, Rock Art of the Dreamtime, Images of Ancient Australia, 1998, of which the former and latter aim to display Indigenous movements, megafaunal extinction, adaptation and modification of environment human origins, and of course trade. These books also tell the stories of Jinmium, the Mungo Man, and rock art, and how certain rock arts were made, such as tools used from hand stencils and depiction of deific beings, of which the final work is a cursory, very interesting explorer's guide to Australia. So pictured here is the trading card that I designed for Josephine Flood. I included the number 78 as it was the year in which she was instated as director for the Australian Heritage Commission, the mountains to show her love for mountaineering, the Greek Parthenon as she taught classics during her stint at the ANU, and Australia as she was very inspirational and influential archaeologist that conducted her archaeology predominantly throughout Australia. These are the references that are used in my research and my study on Josephine Flood. Thank you so much for listening, everybody.